So have you ever been in a situation where you've prayed and prayed for something? Maybe you've um, really been seeking the Lord for something. And after that prayer has ceased, you've come to that one question. So what's next? What happens now? I was in Nehemiah and um, I love this this uh, this book. Whenever I read Nehemiah, I usually relate it back to uh, how I operate at work <laughs> or in, even in business in terms of building and rebuilding things. And I was in Nehemiah 1 where it talks about um, in verse 4, this is Nehemiah's prayer. And he, and he uh, again, he, you know, I want you to go back and, and, and read this, but I'm just going to pull some words out. It says, as soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And this was Nehemiah's response. If you go a little bit further about the exile and the trouble and the work that had stopped, the wall of Jerusalem had broken down, the gates had been, had, been, had been destroyed by fire. And Nehemiah's response to calamity in his life was to do uh, what I think a lot of us do, which is we sit down, we cry, we mourn, we fast, and then we pray, we ask God for, for help. The prayer that Nehemiah used uh, in verse five, it says, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. It goes further, it actually shows where Nehemiah is confessing his own sins. Uh, in verse seven, we acted corruptly against you, have not kept your commandments. He even asked the Lord to remember the word that you commanded concerning uh, us, you know, that if we were unfaithful, we'd be scattered. So all of these things are happening with Nehemiah after he heard about the wall of Jerusalem being broken down. He goes to God in prayer and uh, and then he is sent, he's selected, he's sent to Judah. He inspects Jerusalem's wall and he starts the work. Um, so my question that I opened up with, so what's next? Uh, in chapter four, in Nehemiah four, if you're like me, y'all, and you've gone through some things and you've you've gone to the throne, you've prayed the Lord, you know, uh, show me what to do concerning this situation. And, you know, after that, uh, after all these things, after Nehemiah had approached the throne, he prayed, he was sent on the assignment, he started doing the work, building, you know, building the work, building the wall, doing what God had called him to do. Um, in verse uh, in verse 15 in chapter four, I love this. It says, now when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. He goes on to talk about from all, from that day on, how they worked on the construction uh, and, you know, the walk, the wall being uh, completed. They, they labored and and uh, they even held spares from the break of dawn. So they were even still um, aware of, attack, still aware of the trap, still aware of the potential for danger while they were working on the wall. Now, let me bring this home and and um, and see if I can make it make sense of what I'm trying to say about, so what's next? I want to encourage you and even myself, y'all, when we are going through the things, and I mean the things, I mean the things, the pain, the sorrow, um, the debt, the death, um, all of these things, all these situations that you're going through, um, when you approach God and you give it over to him, when you give him your, you know, Lord, you know, you know, this is, this is where I need help. When you're calling on the Lord, that when it talks about um, returning back to the wall, to each, to his work, is that what's next for you is, you know, it's not praying and then you stop doing what God has called you to do. It's not, you know, praying, Lord, help my, you know, help my family heal, heal, uh, heal the sick in my family and still not doing the work that you need to do, you know, still supporting, still um, being a comforter, being a help. It's not just calling out to God and, uh, and just kind of like taking your hands off the wheel, if you will, <laughs> right? He takes the wheel, but you still gotta, you still gotta be in the car with him. So what's next uh, in terms of this particular story that I wanted to show is that when you pray to God, you bring him your troubles. Uh, when you bring your troubles to the Lord, there is still a work that we need to do. Part of what we do is we apply faith and we believe God for what he said to us about our situation. We know that God is our deliverer, right? And so in Nehemiah, when, when Nehemiah was 
uh, building the wall. That was the what's next for him. He didn't stop doing what it is that he needed to do. He didn't stop his assignment. He didn't stop the work because he prayed. And so a lot of a lot of us now, I'm talking to those of us who are praying and believing for God. And when the word talks about pray without ceasing, but you still have to do the work that's aligned to it. If you're praying for, um, you know, Lord, uh, help my marriage, it, it doesn't mean that you just, you stop having, you know, uh, conversations or you stop doing the work to heal that marriage. Um, if you're praying for the Lord to deliver your son and daughter, it doesn't mean that now you just step back and God's going to, you know, it's going to happen and that's it. So what's next for you is, is, is being mindful of the work that you still have to do even after your prayer. Even after Nehemiah delivered that prayer to the Lord, he still had to go and build the wall. He still had to go and do the work. So I want to encourage you to part of your so what's next isn't just sitting back and hoping that things work out, but you actually do the work that is going to help you to get there. Yeah, the Lord is going to send you help. The Lord will give you favor. The Lord will bless you. He'll guide you. He'll steer you, but you still have to do the work. So what's next for you? What's next after you've said that last prayer? You know, when you feel like this is it, Lord, um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know what I'm going to do with my, my, my life, my family. What's next for you? What's your plan? What are you going to do? And if you don't know what to do, are you asking the Lord to give you guidance? Are you listening for that? Are you listening to his urging when he's saying, you know, go this direction? Uh, if he sends you help, you know, are you, are you going back to the Lord to, to give you the spirit of discernment so you know that help is coming from him? What is your next because what we're not going to do is just pray and wait and just wait. <laughs> Even in the waiting, there is work to be done. So what is your next? What's next for you? I want us to be uh, blessed. I want us to soar. I want every person who is under the sound of my voice to be um, just blessed beyond. You know, I have such a heart and a hope for every person that I meet for y'all to be you know, the best ever to be happy and to be filled with joy and, and to experience God and, and the fruit of the Spirit. I want goodness, the goodness of the Lord for you. I want your family to be prosperous and well. I want, you know, everyone um, to just experience God in such a mighty way. I want you to feel love. I, I want you to be healed. I want everywhere you go that you're the blessing and the breakthrough. I want you to have such a heart pasta for Jesus that that his love wraps you. Everywhere you go, you feel his love and you become the light for somebody else. What's next for you to get you to that next level where God is trying to take you? Is it getting out of the situation you're in? and Or is it getting focused? Is it getting refocused? Is it getting recommitted? What is your next? So what happens now? What happens now after you've prayed? What happens next? What happens next? Father, I pray that you will bless us and you will open our eyes so we can see clearly what you have us doing, what you want us to do next. So many of us are asking because we don't know what is next for us, our next step. Should we, should we take the business deal? Should we take the new job? Is there a job coming? Is there a project coming? What, what do you want us to do next in our family and in our lives? What is next for us? Father, would you open, open up our eyes so we can see clearly when it's as a blessing that comes from you. We don't want to make the wrong choices or wrong decisions, Lord God. Would you steer us? The word says that you are our shepherd and we shall not want. So Lord, would you guide us in such a way so that we know that it is you and we're staying on track. We are refocused. We are, we are delivering in the things that you have um, you know, determined for us, the things that are meant for us, the blessings that are meant for us. For those of us who are questioning what's next, what's next for us, would you show us clearly, Lord God, would you bless us? That is my prayer for us, y'all. So that when you ask that question, so what's next, that there's a clear response from heaven that tells you what to do, that you don't have any confusion about what you're going to do next. Amen? So what's next? Powerful, right? All right, y'all. That's what I wanted to share with you. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. God bless you. Jesus loves you more and take care. Bye.